Hi traders, Tom here. In this video, we will be discussing my favorite topic in trading the markets, options. So how do we see the options market right now from an S&P 500 perspective? And what kinds of setups do we look for? Stay tuned. Firstly, I would just like to remind everybody that if you're enjoying our current content, please don't forget to support us by liking the video, commenting down below, and of course subscribing and hitting that alert button for more daily market videos. Now I've always been a believer that not following the retail herd mentality is the most important thing in many things in life. If you were a business and you wanted to be successful, you need to know what your competitive advantage is and do it better. Not many people come up with great ideas or new ideas, but people can come up with amazing ways to reinvent that same idea. If you were the same as everyone else, you wouldn't be in business for very long. So before we get into the technical analysis and talk more about options and how to take advantage of markets like we're seeing right now, I wanna to talk to everybody about sentiment. And sentiment is a very, very important tool when it comes to trading. You need to understand what everyone else is thinking and you also wanna understand what Wall Street is thinking about your position. Now I can't share some of the graphs that we get because we do pay for them and I'm pretty sure that's copyright striking. But what I did wanna mention is here's some free basic just Google searching techniques that you can find sentiment very easily. So this is daily FX and you'll notice that it says here the IG client sentiment and it has net long and net short buyers. Now what do we notice straight away? Net short is incredibly high compared to net long on the S&P 500 index. I've always found that the market will usually not do something that we all expect it to do until generally people don't believe it. So many people are bears on the market and I think they have a very fair case in the short term. However, when you're thinking about when it's going to happen, it always happens when we least expect it. So here, many people are obviously expecting it in the retail crowd. If we jump over here to the CNN business website, you can see that there's a slight amount of fear. You go through their different fear greed indicators, and I wouldn't pay too much attention to these, but one that thing is interesting is the options. So you'll notice here, during the last five trading days, volume in put options has lagged volume in call options by 38% as investors make bullish bets in their portfolios. So it's interesting that the options market, there are bullish bets now coming in as opposed, as opposed to bearish bets. But that doesn't surprise me because we, we're thinking about two different markets. If we're trading options, we're trading something that is we believe is gonna happen over a certain period of time. If we're buying a call option, and then the market doesn't go up, we are not gonna make any money. So remember, when you think about it, if Wall Street has trapped everyone into the idea of thinking that this market is going long now, in terms of many, many people are gonna be believing that, that's the tipping point where if people are buying call options, if it expires in one week, two weeks, three months, and the market is not higher than their strikes, they will lose money. The other thing I want to mention is that on the right hand side here, we have the difference in put call ratios. And again, you can see that the puts went up a lot into the fear and then they've dropped off significantly. And this drop off, we will come back to. Investing.com, relatively similar. So we're starting to hit this tipping point where sentiments are very close together in terms of bullish and bearish sentiment from the retail crowd. Go over to trading view, we're starting to see a bit of bull analysis going on here, but still mostly a lot of bearish analysis. When we start seeing more things like this, where it says S&P 500 buy, not to pick on this person, but anybody's continuously saying buy, 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 and we're starting to see these mixed emotions, that's the period that you want to be thinking outside of the box when it comes to your trading and start focusing on the price action and methods that you're going to use to get a competitive advantage in a market condition that will, of course, change. We have a VIX above 30 still. 
that is historically still incredibly high. So at any point in time, volatility can come straight back into the market and that certainly hasn't happened recently. So let's now talk about the charts and let's talk about what has been happening recently. Well, one thing is that everybody is talking about this particular candle, the shooting star. We've mentioned this this week and this is an incredibly bearish type of candle. However, if this candle was to be broken above and we saw the market go above this point and break to a new high, then effectively what that would mean is that the bulls are very much in control. And I would say this is a pivotal point in this market. If the market gets above this point and does not reject and goes above 3000, then I think the bulls are fully in control and we have seen them take over the market. However, if the counteracting point happens to that and we start to see weakness in the S&P 500 and we see a point where the S&P 500 breaks underneath the 2720 zone, then that will be a very big counter and that will pretty much start what I believe will be the sell-off coming into the S&P 500 because it's such a key point when we look at it from a trading perspective. So this brings me to my point about competitive advantages. So there's many different ways of trading a market like this and many different instruments. One of those ways is of course to trade it normally where you would sell, let's say CFDs index CFDs against the S&P 500. That's what a lot of people will do. They'll wait for their trigger point, And then as the market comes down, they'll enter their trigger, let's say around this point here. The problem with that though, is that in a market like this, what happens when markets sell off is they often spike. So here we can see a big sell off followed by an incredible momentum, bullish momentum, followed by a massive sell off. And of course, many people have been hurt by this recent bull run that's happened in the market. And that is a big issue. If we've got a market that is coming up very, very quickly, going down, spiking up, going down, then if we're trading it with a CFD, it can take us through a massive emotional roller coaster. And from a trading perspective, if you go through a massive amount of let's say psychological damage, you can make very heavy mistakes. And I'm sure many people that have watched that are watching this video right now would be aware and have experienced that. I know I certainly have, everybody has that's been trading for a long period of time. There'll always be an event that eventually does get you and you'll make mistakes that you hopefully learn from. So let's talk about the concept of the market, where it currently is and where it could be in the future. I think the best thing to do is to focus on that 2720 area of support. So if the market was to break and come down and test the 2720 and get lower, we've talked about how CFDs may be an option for us as short sellers in the market. But what about using options themselves? Traditionally, most people, what they will do is they will buy a put option when the market triggers and they're ready to sell it. The problem with buying just a put option is that when the market is down at this level 2720, no doubt the premium has heavily increased on that particular option. This is the difficulty that generally people have when it comes to trading options. They always see things from a perspective of it's incredibly expensive and people are starting to see it. Now, as the option goes further down, it will become more expensive as well. So you do need to remember that. Recently on the ASX, which is our index here in Australia, you were getting paid 10% for selling an index option, literally down near the lows for less than 30 days. So the market had already fallen off in Australia around 35 to 40% and you were getting paid a further 10% for less than 30 days. I'll let that sink in, crazy amounts of money. So obviously buying puts, while it is a very valid way of doing things, and it's amazing from the perspective of we have a fixed risk when we buy a put, it can be expensive when things happen. So what I like to propose as a better strategy would be to think of puts from a spread perspective. So when we first are thinking about the 2720 zone, we see the break and we think, okay, at this point, where do we expect the next support to be? 
So if the next support is at 2400, we can say, well, let us consider how we can potentially profit from the market going down to 2400, but not necessarily pay too much upfront. This is where the concept of spreads comes in to play. So with the index, we could think, all right, well, we might want to trap it between 2450 and 2400. If we just bought a put, that put potentially could cost us anywhere between 100 and 125 points, depending on, of course, time. Now, this is obviously a little bit higher than a lot of people are looking at. It's purely theoretical numbers, but when you do see it in the market, you'll know what I mean. If we're doing the spread, we may only have to pay 10 points, let's say. The numbers won't be this extreme, but I'm using it to get my point across. The spread, we are capturing a small market move. But we know that once this level breaks, generally the price will try to fill the next gap. We also know that volatility is incredibly high in the markets. And if volatility is incredibly high, generally the market will move down very quickly. We still have the same opportunity of closing this, the spread at the same as we do closing the put. Though there is that idea that the longer that you hold the spread in, and the closer to expiry the spread is, you will get, of course, a better payday. So the idea here really is that if you're just buying a put, you're doing the absolute standard technique. There's a lot of different techniques about trapping the market, but I found on indexes, using things like spreads is incredibly advantageous and over the longer term, you will have more success with the amount of money that you can make. If you're only paying 10 to 15 points and you're getting 50 points of payout, then every dollar that you're putting down, you're getting a very good risk reward ratio. You also don't need to worry with options about the concept of you getting stopped out, stop hunted, any of those things. The only thing that is your enemy is time. If we have something like a double top pattern, and that double top pattern has taken a certain period of time. Let's say over here, it's taken 10 candles to get up. And then over here, it's taken another 11 candles to get up. And then every time it's sold off very similar, then what we're doing is we're analyzing the market and saying, okay, generally this period has taken this long. Let's call this a day. So when it breaks through, it should take a very similar period to come down. What I'd do is I'd times that number by let's say two times, and I'd say, okay, let's say 20 days it will take to go the distance of what I believe. If we use that philosophy, then we could put a spread down here. We could put, let's say 30 days on it. And as the market came down, we could close it through here because we know that that was what the pattern was telling us. We've got our theoretical area that the pattern is saying to go to. We've got a timing and we can take advantage of using the spread to maximize our returns on the money we're putting in the market at no further risk other than the time expiry. So I'll leave everybody today with this question. Which do you think is the smarter choice? Using the CFD or potentially using the option that relieves the stress of potentially getting stopped out. The worst thing that can happen to you is that the market bulls back up, hits a resistance, and then sells off and goes in your direction. By using options, you have the advantage of the market being able to get the time that it needs to get to your zone. So with good quality analysis, with good thought processes, and thinking outside the box, you can take advantage of the market like many people do. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and of course, comment down below if you have any questions. I'd also love to do a top tips video for traders out there for useful information and websites that they can use. So please do comment down below and give me some of your favorites so I can share it with our new community. Thanks everybody and happy trading.